Welcome to the Legacy Leaders Podcast. Are you doing the best for your client to help them create their legacy? Are you creating a plan that goes far beyond finances to help people ensure that it becomes the driving force behind all decisions? On this podcast, hosts Katie Beth Hand and Stan Miller will help you with growing your practice and your client's peace of mind. Together, they bring the best and brightest minds to share with you how to help your clients develop their best legacy. And now, here are your hosts, Katie Beth and Stan. Hey, this is Eddie James with Legacy Partners, and I'm so excited today to interview Sandra Portney with Engel Warner, just to share a little bit about Sandra. Uh, For over 25 years, Sandra has represented clients in corporate and real estate transactions, tax, succession, and estate planning, and business disputes. Her Uh, Her clients include up-and-coming entrepreneurs, startup and emerging companies, nonprofit and tax-exempt organizations, and established businesses seeking personalized service. After graduating from ASU, Arizona State University College of Law, she began her career at Ernest & Young LP in Los Angeles, California, as a senior tax consultant in both the Entrepreneurial Services Group and the Business Management Group where she was responsible for tax planning for closely held companies with revenues between 5 million and 500 million, as well as various A-list actors, producers, directors, athletes, musicians, and Fortune 500 executives. After spending time in California, working at one of the largest business services firms in the world focused on tax planning, Sandra decided to return to Arizona to practice law in the state where she spent her formative years growing up. Sandra's primary focus is advising clients in the areas of business formation, structural and tax planning, asset and equity purchases and sales, real estate transactions, including sales and purchases of commercial properties, vacant land and retail, industrial and ground leases, contract drafting and review, preparation of operating agreements and shareholder agreements, obtaining tax-exempt status for charitable organizations and other business entities, disputes between principals and commercial disputes. She also has significant experience representing individuals and business owners in developing their estate and succession plans, including business and exit strategies, revocable and irrevocable trusts, irrevocable life insurance trusts, family limited partnerships, and limited liability companies and other tax planning and asset protection strategies. Outside of her life as an attorney, Sandra has found her passion in horses. Sandra is an avid equestrian that participates in the discipline of dressage and one day looks forward to competing with her horse in internationally sanctioned dressage competitions. She also enjoys scuba diving, and earned her advanced open water certification so she can spend vacations exploring the world's oceans at greater depths and getting to experience awe-inspiring Shark Week type encounters. Well, Sandra, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for that wonderful introduction, Eddie. I appreciate it. Oh, I was so glad to go ahead and read it. It was such a wealth (laughs) of information and it was like, oh, you can't not read some of it. So yes, all right. Well, to begin with, uh, let's go back a little bit in time. Sure. And could you share with us, why did you go to law school? You know, it was interesting. I ran, I dropped out of college in my junior year to start a business making washable suede bathing suits, believe it or not. Um, Bucking a trend. I was, you know, early, early, um, what do they call them? Uh, uh, Oh, what are, what are the, the, the term, um, you know, I was disturbing the market. I mean, I, you know, everything was Lycra and I came out with these washable suede bathing suits. Um, so I ran the company for seven years that we had a massive amount of success. Um, I, my first year, we hoped to do a hundred thousand dollars. We did a half a million. Um, and then we built it from there. I went into suede and leather clothing And then I watched the recession hit in 1991. And it was a really interesting time because this recession took down retail. 
Um, many of the stores I was dealing with were going bankrupt. Um, I was spending, well, and there was a big shift in fashion, a big shift in the way we manufactured. Everything was going overseas. And so you couldn't afford to manufacture in the U.S. and be cost competitive. Mm. Um, and, you know, at the time I was 27 and, you know, I, the, the thought of going to like Taiwan or the Philippines or China as a 27 year old girl was not really, you know, we didn't have as global of a society as we have today. And, you know, so it was very hard. And, you know, I, I, there was a window of opportunity. It was really interesting. It was, you know, I, I was in a position where I was, had, I, I had assets and I knew if I sold them, I had enough money to change what I was doing. Um, you know, I, I spent my 20 somethings, 120 plus hours a week was my average work week. Um, I was in a factory, I was managing production, I was wearing every hat in the business. I had one vacation day in seven years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I decided to close it down, I, I thought a lot about the things that I really wanted to understand. Um, and I, I thought, okay, I, I want to go back to school, finish my degree. I switched from marketing and advertising to do finance because money is the basis of your business. You have to have your hands wrapped around your financial situation. The second decision was I knew undergrad was not the end of it. I knew I wanted an, an advanced degree. And I thought law school was just the perfect degree to have for somebody who really wants to do business because now I can walk in the business world and understand what's legal, what's not legal. I mean, it expands the scope of my understanding, you know, greatly. So the goal was to go out, you know, and, and teach other entrepreneurs how to do business in the legal realm with comfort. Mm. So mm. that, that was... That was the decision. That's a great story. Fantastic story. Uh, and then what was, what was the transition that led into estate planning? Well, you know, my, my, my business, my, 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 my business experience followed me to law school. So when I went to law school, it wasn't about litigation. It was all about doing business contracts, taxes, and very tax heavy concentration. Um, you know, and estate planning to me was super important because as I learned more, the last thing, you know, look, the goal is, is we're not gonna get into a situation where you're not gonna pay taxes. I mean, that's, you know, these people who say you don't have to pay taxes, you know, we don't have to, I mean, you know, I don't want the silver bracelets on my hand getting led away for evasion. But what I did want to understand is how can I minimize tax consequences and estate planning, you know, you, you look at it and if you don't do it right and you don't think about it, you could wind up spending a lot of money on taxes. One of my favorite stories, you know, if you think about this, um, it was the old owner of, I believe it was, uh, um, was it the Raiders? And they sold it when, when the father died, the team went over to the kids, but they couldn't afford the tax consequences based on the value of the team. So they had to sell it. I mean, you know, you talk about, you know, when I started the, ex the estate tax exemption was 625,000, you know, you start a business, you know, and, and at the time, if you think about it, when he bought the Raiders, it was maybe, you know, in, in the eight figure category. When he died, it was hundreds of millions of dollars. If he had, a, if he was able to think about it then and take the tax consequences for gifting it and putting it in an irrevocable trust, right? the kids could have had it and they could have benefited. So today this team's worth billions. Exactly. So, you know, the, the concept fascinated me how you can plan early to save millions and millions and millions of dollars. I mean, these small techniques, you know, where, you know, for instance, with trusts, I mean, done right, you take an irrevocable life insurance trust, 
not so much of an issue today because we have this, you know, $13.9 million exemption. So it, per person, right. so it doesn't really apply. But when that rolls back, you know, and you get to 5 million per person, you're going to affect a lot of lives. It's important for every dollar that I can move into an estate plan, I'm going to save 40 cents in taxes. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Multiply yeah. that by a million. I've got 400,000. Multiply that by 10. I have $4 million. I don't know. I think I'd rather have my family keep that $4 million than give it to the U.S. government for some irresponsible spending programs, right? I completely agree. So and I yeah. love the direction that you're going uh, with this. What I would love to hear is, could you share a little bit more about what does it mean to, to help your clients with these types of estate planning needs? Sure. You know, listen, it, it's, it, it's, 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 First of all, you know, it's funny because clients have this on their to-do list. Got to get my estate planning done. Got to get my estate planning done. And we go through the process. And when we're done, they're handed a book. And it's, you know, we, we do a binder and everything's organized and everything's in place and everything's funded and they know where everything is at. And there's this huge feeling of relief that you know, I'm organized because what I tell my clients, and this is really important to think about, you know, we've all dealt with deaths in the family and it's a very emotional time. And you know, what's important is when you leave this world, that you leave the people that, were, that, that are left grieving for you, organized you, you, you give you give them the gift of organization and that feels really good it's the last great gift you can give to somebody they're not going to spend time running around saying oh my gosh what are the assets what do we have to deal with you know how do we have to do this done right it's really simple there's it, it's it's a seamless transition and isn't that a wonderful thing to give to somebody so they can spend their time thinking about you know how much they're missed how much they love the person, you know, grieving and getting through what they have to get through and not having to deal with legalities, probate, infighting, you know, all these things. I mean, you know, what a great thing to give to the people you love. And that's how I feel about, you know, estate planning. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, what about when it comes to clients? Is there an ideal client that you feel that you bet? best fit with when working with them? Not really. I mean, you know, I can deal with all clients from the smallest estates that don't require really much planning. I mean, a simple will and, you know, what we call transfers by law, you know, transfer on death at, at the bank, you know, teaching a client, go to the bank and ask for a transfer on death account. Um, let's do a beneficiary deed so we can put your house you know, a house is one of the big things that throws people into probate, a simple beneficiary deed. I mean, we literally, we charge, we charge $75 to do a beneficiary deed. You know, it puts your house in a situation where you can transfer it to your heirs without having to go through probate, beneficiary titles. So, you know, a simple little estate all the way up to, I mean, listen, I love the complex, you know, many moving wheels and, you know, estate planning and, you know, really like, you know, where you're doing family limited partnerships and you're planning for gifting for children and, you know, life insurance trusts and, you know, LLCs set up to, you know, protect assets. I mean, the really complex, I love those just as well. You know, um, uh, what are they? Uh, the Arab, uh, the um, intentionally defective grantor trust, you know, where you're moving, um, assets that appreciate in value into a trust vehicle so they can appreciate there instead of in your estate causing a tax consequence. So, you know, the complex, from the simple to the complex, any client is a good client. Okay, thank you. And then how can the, how, how is it best for potential clients to best find you? Um, well, if you look at Warner Angle online, Look up my name, look up estate planning attorneys. Um, you know, that's, you have to know my name to find me, I guess. 
Um, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, I, I probably need to get into more um, SEO type stuff so I can make sure that if you type in my name, you know, it comes up or if you type in a state planning attorney, I come up, you know, fast, on, you know, up in the top one or two pages. Um, I guess I'll get into that at some point in time, but, you know, I've been really busy. So I really haven't had to do a lot of marketing. I, I have a lot of referrals that come through. <clears throat> um, you know, I'll probably get into some marketing this year. I, I kind of want to put my name out there more because I want more people to, you know, get into their estate plans and done right and done with care and done with precision. And, you know, I, listen, I hear stories all the time about, you know, clients going to attorneys and, and they don't sit down and dig into the details of what the clients are doing. What are their objectives, especially business owners? Okay. Ideally, that's my favorite estate plan is, is a business owner because it's not just an estate plan. It's a succession plan. And a lot of business owners don't think about these things, you know, and, and, you know, you, you start bringing it up and you bring up the various ways that you can plan for the succession of your business. And people are like, oh, wow, I never thought about that. You know, well, it's good that you're starting to think about that. I've just given you food for thought. That's important. That's important. So, you know. It's really important. Awesome. Excellent. Excellent example. Any other examples of maybe uh, some maybe some common misconceptions that you've noticed over the years when it comes to estate planning? Um, that it's really, you know, trusts are really expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the biggest misconception. Um, you know, my trusts are way cheaper than what it costs to do a probate on a tiny estate. I just had a really good friend of mine whose mother passed away and they didn't have a lot of money. I mean, she, it was really very small amount of money. And one of the things I don't do is I don't go into court and open probates. We have a whole other division that, you know, a litigation division that deals with, you know, trial courts. I, I'm the person who drafts the contracts and drafts the documents. Um, you know, my friends, my, my friend's mother, all they had was a house. The house had a reverse mortgage on it. So she had to, you know, open up a probate. I mean, like I said, simple. If she had to talk to me beforehand, we could have done a beneficiary deed. It would have been simple, $75, done. She was getting quotes to open up a probate, $5,000 yeah. for one simple little house. So a misconception is estate planning is expensive. No, probate is expensive. It's a court process. It's open to the public. The minute you file those documents, you are public record. You know, my estate planning is not public record. It's cheaper to do today than it is going to be. And, and, you know, especially if you're doing a more complex estate. You know, in a trust, I might get you through for less than $5,000 on a very complex, you know, where I've got businesses and I've got assets and I've got, you know, all kinds of things. I could probably get you through for less than $5,000 where you're going to spend $10,000 in probate. So that's a huge misconception. Don't, don't save a penny today to spend a dollar tomorrow. Exactly. Excellent quote, excellent quote. And I love, I hope that everyone is really hearing her shepherd's heart uh, in this process. Uh, you know, what else, and I know you've kind of touched upon this already there, there Sandra, but uh, what are some common issues that you feel like that you really are able to help people with? You know, it, it's really just organizing and helping them to understand you know, what their estate is. I mean, you know, I've done this for 27 years. So this isn't rocket science for me. But for somebody who's never approached it, you know, it's like, you know, it's like pig pen in, in peanuts where just, you know, there's a swirl of just dirt and stuff going around your head. And you're thinking about all these things and you're what ifing, what ifing, what ifing. You know, you can what if till, till you, the next morning and you're, you know, laying in bed going, oh my gosh, and you've solved nothing. 
Right. You know, what, what I do is, is help you to make sense of everything. So you understand how it works. You know, one of the important things that I love about, you know, the, the profession I chose is I'm a counselor. I counsel people. I teach them. Knowledge is power. And when you understand things, there's a, there's a, a very calm feeling that you have because you don't have to worry about the great unknown. You now know. So that's my goal is to teach people to know what it is. You know, with estate planning, it's understanding what you have, understanding your assets, how they come into play in your estate plan, how we transfer those assets upon your death. And, you know, different assets have different, you know, things that we're going to want to do, you know, um, houses, you know, some people are into buying real estate. You know, when I'm done, you're going to know enough about how to transfer assets into your trust. So you don't, you know, I'm there for questions and I'm there for support, but most people understand how to deal with it once I'm done with them. So it's a one and, you know, one and done, unless you want to start amending things and you have, you know, changes in your life that are, you know, more major changes. Maybe I want to plan for grandchildren. Maybe I don't want certain people to get things, you know, but it's always good. Listen, it doesn't cost a lot of money to ask the question. And sometimes spending a couple hundred dollars today, I'm going to save you thousands of dollars in the future. That's really important, you know. Um, but I think it's really understanding is, is the most important thing that, that you know, that, that you deal with with people when you deal with estate planning. So, you know, if you have a business, they're all worried about, well, how do my kids get it? You know, well, simply put, I just put it in the trust and I assign, you know, we make an amendment with the corporation commit commission. If you're Arizona, if you're another state, we make an amendment to change the ownership. If it's an LLC, if it's a corporation, we just register it in the stock books, you know, so, but it's, it's important to understand, you know, there's certain ways to set it up that make it a lot more seamless than just running at it without the knowledge, you know, and, and you know what, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I'm going to make my statement because, you know, legal zoom, you know, God, it's, it's it, it, legal zoom and the internet. I mean, it's great. You know, if you really know what you're doing, mm -hmm. but man, I've seen mm -hmm. more problems come through because it's, it's cookie cutter. And, you know, nobody's cookie cutter. Everybody's their own individual. You have to look at, you know, what do you have? How, you know, it, it, I individualize the process. I, I want to learn about you and everything about you. Who are you today? Where do you plan to be in the future? You know, all this comes into the way I draft my documents. So that's important. It's not just a form. You know, that's a big misconception. I have a form and I just fill in the blanks and they're all the same, you know, we, we use a software drafting service to, in fact, I heard this on one of your other podcasts is somebody mentioned, oh, you just think we sit down at wealth council, press a button and pop out a document, you know, wealth council is the gold standard of trust drafting, but it's not as simple as pressing a button. There's a big long questionnaire we go through and there's a lot of options that we have to take into consideration to get a base document drafted. And then once that base document comes out, we craft that and we hone it in for you specifically. So what comes out of that software package and the way it looks when you give it to the client are two different stories. You know, there's great basis there. There's great solid language. You know, we've taken care of every aspect of giving a trustee who's going to take over this estate plan when you die, every possible tax option and election possible, which is, you know, whether you use it or not, just to have it in place is there. If you don't need it, say la vie, but if you need it, guaranteed it's in there. And that's what we want, comprehensive. Right. And you can't get comprehensive when you're going cookie cutter. So, no, not at all. Not at all. Excellent point. And so, and you, sh I know previously you shared a great example of, of estate planning going wrong. 
any stories that pop into your mind of it going right? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I, I you know, first of all, I, one of my favorite estate plans that I've watched, um, I had a, a friend of mine, um, a, a colleague uh, that I work with uh, who's a CPA and his best friend who passed away, who was also a friend of mine and a client of mine. And he had a phenomenal estate plan put together. So when he passed away, he left a son behind and the son was very young. He was in college and he had two very successful businesses. And I'm talking, you know, these are businesses that value today is up in the mid eight figures. And the son, you know, he was young and he also understood something which I thought was absolutely brilliant that if he had his hands on the money, he probably wouldn't have done the right thing with it. And the trust took into consideration and it also had an option to decant, which is kind of important because, you know, originally the trust said distributes when he turns 30 and then another tranche when he turns 35 and another tranche when he turns 40. But there's so much money here and, and he really doesn't have the financial maturity behind him. So the decanning provision allowed the trustees to go in and essentially make this a dynasty trust. Mm -hmm. So it takes care of my friend's son for his life in a manner that, trust me, he is not hurting for anything. I mean, he has a fabulous life. He's gone to college. He can choose what business he wants to do. He has a lot of options. He has the resources to fund him. When he chooses to get married, he'll be able to buy a wonderful house and give his wife a wonderful life. And they'll be able to have a family who will never want for anything. Kids will have a phenomenal college fund. So, you know, grandkids, my, my client's grandchildren will have a college fund. I mean, if they said, mom, dad, I want to go to Harvard, the money would be there. Right. You know, mom, dad, I, I want to, I want to buy a horse. I'm really good at riding and I want to someday go for the U.S. equestrian team. You know what? The money's there. That's a successful plan. And the tax consequences were minimal on that, minimal. So it was very good estate planning. Excellent story. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, what would you say is one of your bigger challenges? Um, you know, it's not so much challenges anymore. I mean, you know, after 27 years, I don't find a lot of issues. I mean, challenges come with people who are um, people who don't really want to take the time. Just get me through this. I don't care about reading this document. I don't care about understanding it, just putting it in place and let me deal with it. And then, you know, when you have a trust, these are dynamic. I mean, yes, it's a contract. It's really boring. Reading it is like, you know, watching paint dry but it's important to understand it. I mean, you know, as part of my representation, what I offer my clients is when the trust is finished, we can go through, I mean, I'm not going to go through page by page and teach you what I've learned in 27 years, because it would take, you know, it would take 27 years, but I can go over it on a broader scope. And, and if you really open your mind and listen, and ask questions and, and make an effort to understand. You're gonna be that much better off because you're gonna understand how this thing works and how to keep yourself organized as you go along. So, you know, I could create a trust today, but if you don't maintain it, when you die, we could have plenty of issues that we try to avoid in doing the trust to begin with. So I think my biggest challenge is people who don't want to take the time to understand and gain the knowledge. You're the attorney, you know what you're doing. Yeah, I know what I'm doing, but this is a, a, a cooperative process. I mean, you know, it's collaborative. You and I need to work together. I need to understand your assets. 
And don't be afraid to pick up the phone to call me later when you're doing some big, you know, changeover in your assets. Or even call me for a question, listen, a point one, maybe $45. And if for $45, I may teach you something that's going to cost, that, that, that's going to save you once again, hundreds and hundreds of dollars, maybe even thousands of dollars, you know? So just really, you know, take the time to understand what this is about. It's really important. Thank you. Now, I know you've alluded to this a little bit, but I really want to go ahead. I would love to learn a little bit more about what do you like best about being an estate planning attorney? I love teaching people. I, I love, get, I so. you know, teaching people about what this is about, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the other thing, too, is, you know, alleviating your fears. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to teach you. It's going to help you alleviate your fears about what you're doing and, and all the confusion that's going on in your mind about what all this means. And, and really important, I'm going to teach you how to stay organized because, you know, I, when I give you this, this book, I mean, this binder that's filled with documents, you know, I, I tell people, I said, this is like a scrapbook. And as you go through life, you're going to maintain it because upon your death, I want you to make sure I've given you a roadmap and I want you to make sure that you continue to plot the path of that roadmap. So upon your death, when somebody opens that book up, they know exactly where everything is. They're not, you know, I've had a situation where, you know, it, it the trust was not fully funded. They, they, they made the trust, but you know, they didn't, after it was originally funded, they did nothing afterwards. So the client comes to me with a box of papers and we're going through 1099s to try and figure out what assets this estate has. We're looking at tax returns. I mean, that's not what something, what, what people who are left behind that are sad and emotional, that's not what they want to do, you know? So, you know, what I love is when I get a client who really wants to know and understand and, you know, I can walk them through the process and, and, and make them understand. And, you know, it's funny because when they walk out and they walk out with that book in their hands, they have this really great feeling of just serene, calm, like this is finally done. It's finally off my plate. I don't have to worry. And I have to tell you, you know, I, I was the shoemaker with holes in their shoes for a little while, you know, and, and you know, we're going on all these adventurous vacations. And, you know, I, I, I have a husband, but I, we don't have children. We have nieces and nephews, but I have animals. And, you know, people don't think about their animals all the time. You know, I have fur babies. And, you know, when I die, I want to make sure that that my fur babies are well taken care of. I mean, I have a horse that means everything to me. I have two dogs. You know, I want to make sure that they go into the right care because don't think that animals don't get emotional when they're, you know, the person that they love, their person is gone, you know, and horses, you know, depending. I mean, look, right now I may be lucky if, if something happened to me today my horse is very sellable, but when he's 20 or 21 and he's retired, you know, there's a lot of money to keeping up a retired horse. I want to make sure I've planned well for that. I've done a lot of estate planning for people in the equestrian, in, you know, well, I should say that, that I shouldn't say equestrian industry because, you know, it's certainly not a tax write-off and it could get you in a lot of trouble if you try and write that horse off. And, you know, you take losses, you're going to definitely draw that audit. But, you know, I, I do a lot of estate planning for, for people within my community, the equestrian community, so they can help, you know, they, they can deal with their horses and plan for them, you know, upon their death. So there's a pet trust for them. So that's, those are important things. Uh, folks, just such a heart of a teacher. I'm just, I know that that is just ringing loud and clear today. So thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Sandra, is there anything else that you would like to share with us before we bring this to a close? Um, you know, I, I just I, I just encourage people to don't delay. Don't, you know, don't don't close the wallets, you know, to to because you think it's too expensive. Explore it. You know, I mean really it's an important thing to do and it's the best investment you make in your life and especially i say to business owners really need to think about you know your business and what you're going to be doing and the people involved with your business i i i, I sent you an email on a story that i had you know where we were dealing with um, you know we we had been representing a family business and uh, it was two brothers. The father started the business back in the 50s. Um, the brothers ran the business. Um, there was a sister involved. She married very well. So she got to, you know, she sold her shares out because her brothers were the ones running it. Both of the brothers were married. One of the brothers got cancer. We started working on a buy-sell agreement. And in the process of doing it, he was going through chemotherapy. Uh, his wife had her own opinions on the way things should go. And the husband let those opinions override his better judgment. Um, and I'll never forget this. I mean, it was my, one of the partners at my prior firm that was the, the managing partner on the account. And he was with the brother in his hospital bed as he was dying. And he looked at my partner and he said, I am so sorry. My biggest regret is not having finished that, that buy sell agreement. And he passed away without it in place. And he knew it was going to drag on for two years. This thing litigated, it tore the family completely apart, you know, and, and it was, you know, the kids felt it. The kids who were friends were no longer friends. The wife was ostracized. And the wife somehow felt like she wanted to run the business. She never worked a day in her life. I looked at her and I said, you know what? From somebody who's worked for, you know, at that time, 30 plus years, you know, to have the money to be able to spend the time doing what I love, I'd rather do that than having to trudge into work every day to deal with the issues and the problems that you have to you know, deal with. Finally, she came to her senses and they were able to work out a deal. But you know, I, I was sitting in the middle representing the company with two of the top litigators in this town going after each other. And it was contentious. You know, but I, I have to tell you the funniest statement, and, and it sits with me to this day, is one of the attorneys said to me, he said, Sandy, how many times have you sat in the conference room with your clients and you asked your, you know, you asked them, do you want to be in business with your partner's spouse or their heirs? And you hear this resounding, hell no. And he said, you know, for every time you've said that, you can now look at them and say, I know what this looks like. And I know what it looks like, and it's not good. So listen, think about these things. I mean, step outside and, you know, in scuba diving, we have this thing called situational awareness. And the more you dive, the more you are aware of your circumstance or your, 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 your situation all around you. You see more, you open up to more things. I encourage people open up to the things that are important, not just for you, but the people around you. Think about what you're going to leave behind and what it's going to look like, not just your family. But if you're in business, think about your partners because they're going to feel it. And it's not a good thing if you don't plan for it up front. So I say, you know, think about planning. It's really important. Epic. Epic story at the end. Again, yeah. So thank you so much for joining us. Again, this has been Eddie James with Legacy Stories Podcast. I've been here with Sandra Portney, again, with the uh, great organization of Warner Engel. Um, thank you again for joining us. 
Thanks everyone for watching and listening and we'll see you again next time. And thanks Eddie for having me. I really enjoyed it. Oh, we've been blessed to have you here. Thank no, you. Thank you. Blessed to have been on. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. You've been listening to the Legacy Leaders Podcast with Katie Beth Hand and Stan Miller. For more information on them and the show, please visit PinnacleLegacyLaw.com. If you like what you've learned today, do share the program with your friends and subscribe wherever podcasts are found.